Hey guys, it's Greg with Apple Explained, and today we're going to explore the history of the leaked iPhone 4 prototype. This topic was the first place winner of last week's voting poll, and if you didn't get to vote, make sure you're subscribed. That way the voting polls will show up right in your activity feed, and you can let me know which video you'd like to see next. So if you're one of my younger viewers, you may not know much about this story since it took place 8 years ago, but you need to understand that what we're about to discuss is considered by most people as the biggest tech leak in history. And that probably sounds impossible, since Apple's known for being the most secretive company in the world. I mean, they have multiple locks on labs with unreleased products, they have armored doors, they constantly change system passwords, and they even have their own security force patrolling their campus at all times for intruders and spies. And if that wasn't enough, every prototype they built was kept under surveillance with restricted access only to people who were actually included in the product's development. And this is why most Apple employees are just as shocked as we are when the company introduces a new product. There is even a story about a worker being fired for showing an unreleased iPad to another Apple employee. So it's pretty hard to imagine that a super secret iPhone prototype would appear on a random bar stool 20 miles away from Apple's campus. But that just proves that no matter how hard a company tries to be perfect, it'll eventually make a mistake since companies are just made up of humans and humans are imperfect. So this mistake had something to do with an unreleased iPhone 4 prototype, a tech news website called Gizmodo, and a very angry Steve Jobs. So all this happened back in April 2010 when the 3GS was the most recent iPhone model. An employee named Gray Powell was responsible for field testing an unreleased iPhone prototype which would later become the iPhone 4. Now Gray was a 27 year old Apple engineer who had been with the company for two years, and this whole event actually happened on his birthday. Now keep in mind that most of this story is based on what Gray Powell said happened, so we don't really know if all this is 100% true, but we'll at least get the main idea. So it was April 2010, and Powell went to celebrate his birthday with drinks at a German bar called Gourmet House Stout. He had a few drinks and even updated his Facebook status from the phone he was testing. Now the person who eventually ended up with possession of the leaked iPhone was named Brian Hogan. He was at the bar with his friend, and he was sitting next to Gray Powell, but obviously didn't think much about him at the time. Eventually, Gray Powell left the bar and forgot his iPhone prototype on a stool. So we know Brian ended up with the iPhone prototype, but he wasn't the guy who actually found it. Someone else sitting on the other side of Powell was the first person who actually saw the iPhone on a stool. He asked Brian if it was his iPhone and Brian said no. But the other guy figured it must have belonged to one of Brian's friends so he handed the phone to him saying, here, take it. You don't want to lose it. Now I'm not sure if that's actually what happened or if Brian just made that part up to remove some responsibility for taking the phone, but either way he ended up with the phone in his hand and he didn't know who it belonged to. So he asked around the bar but no one claimed it, and then he thought maybe it belonged to the guy who was sitting next to him earlier in the evening, which it did, because the person who sat next to him was Gray Powell. So Brian and his friends stayed at the bar thinking he might come back for it, but Gray never returned. Now Gray and Brian never actually talked or introduced each other while sitting at the bar, so Brian didn't know anything about the phone's owner to try and get into contact with them. Because of this, Brian figured that if he could get into the phone and look around a little bit, he'd eventually find the owner's name or even their contact information to return the phone to them. So he successfully unlocked the phone and played around with it while waiting, and at this point he just thought it was a normal iPhone 3GS, but then it started doing some strange things. He tried opening the camera app, but it crashed every time. There were also two weird looking barcodes on the back and a model number sticker next to the volume keys, so the whole thing just seemed a little off. Now there was six pages of applications on the home screen and one of them was Facebook. He launched Facebook figuring that it'd be a good way to identify the owner, and that's when he discovered the iPhone belonged to none other than Apple engineer Gray Powell. Now since Brian knew who the owner was, he left the bar and figured he'd just get into contact with Gray later on. But when he woke up the next morning, the iPhone was dead. It was bricked remotely through Mobile Me, similar to the remote wipe feature offered by iCloud today, and it was only then that he realized there was something strange about the iPhone's design. The outside of it didn't feel right and he noticed there was a camera on the front, something no iPhone had ever had before. So after messing with it a bit, he managed to take off the fake 3GS case and realized he was holding a device no one had ever seen before. Its design was completely different from any iPhone ever made, with a stainless steel band around the outside and a flat glass back. At this point, he understood how serious the situation was. He was holding an unreleased iPhone that Apple definitely knew was missing and definitely was looking for. Brian didn't want Apple showing up on his doorstep, so he used his own phone to call Apple support and tried to find someone who was at least willing to transfer his call to the right person, 
but that didn't happen. Here's the actual transcript of the conversation that happened between Brian and an AppleCare representative. Hello, thanks for calling AppleCare. Hello, I think I have some kind of iPhone prototype or something. What? Yeah, it's kind of square and it doesn't work. I found it at a bar. Okay, thanks for calling. Obviously, no one on the other end took him seriously, but who can blame him? I mean, imagine working for Apple and some random guy calls up claiming he has an iPhone prototype. I'd probably think it was a prank call or something. Eventually, Brian got a ticket number from Apple, so he expected someone to call him back, but no one ever did. Now, Gray Powell told his boss that he lost the iPhone prototype, and that news went straight to the top. Steve Jobs was furious. But Apple had no way of tracking down the iPhone since it was remotely disabled. And if you're thinking, why didn't they just locate it with Find My iPhone? Well, they couldn't because the beta release of iOS 4 that that prototype was running didn't work with Find My iPhone. So Apple and Brian were totally screwed. At this point, Brian figured if Apple wouldn't take their own prototype, maybe a media outlet would. And maybe they'd pay a lot of money for it. So he called around to different tech blogs like Engadget and Gizmodo and offered them the prototype for $10,000. Apparently there was a bidding war between the two companies and Brian eventually accepted $5,000 from Gizmodo plus a bonus depending on how much traffic the post received. Then on the morning of April 20th, Jason Chen from Gizmodo published a post called This is Apple's Next iPhone. It was a hands-on tell-all about the prototype they had received from Brian, and Jason Chen gave a detailed explanation why he believed the device was a legitimate Apple product. His explanation was so convincing that John Gruber, a well-known Apple insider, said himself that the leak was legit. And this endorsement actually caused Engadget to revise their article about the prototype and make it sound less skeptical, since all signs were pointing to this this leaked iPhone being the real deal. Now once the story got out and was validated, every news outlet imaginable ran wild with their own stories. But the focus of the coverage always came back to Gizmodo since everyone was wondering how they got the iPhone in the first place. Some outlets thought Gizmodo was guilty of receiving stolen property, and all this drama quickly got the attention of Apple CEO Steve Jobs. He actually called Jason Chen himself and said, I want my iPhone back. Now this began a series of emails back and forth between Apple and Gizmodo, but Apple isn't a very patient company when it comes to recovering unreleased products, so they sent a police force called the California Rapid Enforcement Allied Computer Team, whatever the heck that is, and they actually kicked down Jason Chen's door, took four computers, two servers, cameras, and an iPhone. So this was technically legal since they had a warrant, but this move by Apple was very controversial since journalists are entitled to something called shield laws that protect them from having newsroom equipment seized. But no charges were filed against anyone in this case. Now what's interesting about this whole ordeal is what Steve Jobs said publicly about it compared to what he allegedly did about it. Here's a clip of him discussing the issue at the All Things Digital conference in 2010. So you had a prototype of one of your products that was uh wound mm -hmm. up in a bar and uh, you, you've heard of, have you heard of, has this come to your attention? I don't know, because you're the CEO. And well, I can just tell you what, uh, I, there is an ongoing investigation by the DA uh, and uh, uh, I, I'm not current on it, but I can tell you what I do know. This is okay. a story that's amazing. It's, it's got theft, it's got buying stolen property, it's got extortion, there, I'm sure there's sex in there somewhere, you know? <laughs> really? And, <laughs> So somebody should make a movie out of this. Well, we've got some uh, some movie producers. But and then and here. you know and and it was reported that the police broke down somebody's door, which they, to my best of my knowledge, never did. And so it's just this whole thing is 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 very colorful, and uh, the DA's investigating it. And to my knowledge, uh, they have a. a, a somebody from the courts that is making sure that they only see stuff that relates to this case and no other cases. I believe they're taking great pains to do that. And so I don't know where it will end up. It's really up to the DA. So Jobs made it sound like he wasn't really too involved and it was all being left up to the district attorney and whatever ended up happening was fine with him. But sources close to Jobs described a much different attitude than what he was showing in that clip. They said Jobs was furious about the situation and was more involved than anyone else at Apple, demanding updates on any new developments in the story no matter how small. And remember the California Rapid Enforcement Allied Computer Team? 
Well, that turned out to be a private security force that was largely funded by Apple, and supposedly it was Jobs who pushed for the team to get a warrant and forcefully enter Jason Chen's home. Now, Apple may have made some morally questionable decisions during this event, but the real jerks were the people at Gizmodo. They promised Brian a $3,000 bonus after the post was published, but never followed through. They also threw him under the bus legally, so he was burdened with all the attorney fees and court costs that Gizmodo managed to avoid. Actually, after the whole ordeal was over, Brian ended up losing money and it completely destroyed his personal life. If you want to read more about how this affected him, you should read his AMA on Reddit from 2013. It's a kind of sad but really interesting story. And as for Gray Powell, the Apple engineer who actually lost the iPhone, he continued to work at Apple and didn't really face any consequences, which is kind of surprising, but hey, I guess everyone makes mistakes. So that is the story of the leaked iPhone 4 prototype, and if you want to vote for the next video topic, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.